Don't worry, I don't think they can hear us. Why well, have you here? Let me tell you about our Patreon. I think they left. Anyways, if you go to patreon.com slash evaxation, you can help us with better microphones, soundproofing, our, soundproofing our recording rooms, and better audio software to give you a crispier, juicier sound for less than... Shit, hang on. For less than the cost of earbuds you're listening with, you can support our show. Again, that's patreon.com slash evaxation. <laughs> On with the show. You hear the beating of your heart, you know the screaming's gonna start. Here comes the really scary part, cause it's terror time again. They've got you running through the night. It's terror time again. Oh, you just might. The clock has struck midnight, and you know what that means. It's terror time again, and we'll be running this podcast all through the night from a terrifying sight. We are Brian Metters. Yo. I got uh, Troy Stroh with us here guesting this week. Yo, yo, yo. And I am Aaron J. Waseska, and as always, the theme for the, horror, for the Halloween special is terror time from, well, Scooby-Doo. So I like that, I like that jam. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, welcome Troy back to the show and uh, on our Halloween special, no less. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you guys for having me back. This is a wonderful show to be a part of. Aww. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're glad to have you back, man. It's been a good time. Um, so uh, this week, we're going to be talking about uh, 2018's surprise horror movie hit, A Quiet Place, which we got a lot of stuff to talk about. This, is, this got a lot of fun stuff here. Um... Before we get to that, though, uh, instead of doing a what you watching segment, uh, we've been doing a, sp- tr- a specific question regard- that kind of ties into the movie a little bit, and this one is, uh, how do you guys see the end of human society, and do you think you'll survive? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm dead. I am a dead man. I am. <laughs> Brian, you've been working out, though. You could, you're tough now. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I've been working out, but the thing is, is that I, like, there's so much of my like just general life that's built on societal norms if i tried to like go off the grid or some shit i would be dead i have like no survival skills i am self-aware enough to know that i would so, so do my damnedest you're telling me. like i am yeah i would do my damnedest <laughs> to survive but I could see myself being one of the early folks who sacrifice themselves <laughs> so that other people can go and live. I'm the guy that jumps at the zombie to to let you guys escape. That's that's probably. Ah, uh, you're the one. You're gonna scream so we can uh, so we can walk away. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. <laughs> I, I'm the John Krasinski of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't make. It. I'd probably try to find a group to join. Um, who know how to how to make it? Because if I don't find a group and I'm solo dolo. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be a long, long movie scene for yeah. my life. Yeah. Now, I, that's, yeah. Uh, so, so I'm in the same boat. I have no uh, survival skills. However, I like to think I can be pretty stealthy. So, depending on what the actual <laughs> like threat is, I could probably sell it for a little while. But I mean, I'd run out of food pretty damn quick. So I don't know. I, I think the lack of internet and uh, and. Um, being able to sleep without having to look over my shoulder would be a complete like mind fuck for me. Yeah, so that would be yeah. that would be horrible. I just I'm just imagining you walking through the woods trying to sneak by tree by tree. That's a, a funny thought. <laughs> be like, be like they didn't see me. They didn't see me. I think I'm good. But I step on a twig and all of a sudden the monster gets me. Fuck. <laughs> well, there there I go. <laughs> Um, actually, that brings me to an interesting question I'm going to have later in the film, or in, later in the podcast, about this movie in particular, so I'm, I'm going to hold on to that for now, but just, just you wait. It'll be great. Um, so, uh, yeah, this week is uh, a Quiet Place, um, and uh, I thought before we get to the import, uh, the accolades and important notes, let's get some uh, some initial thoughts. What do you guys think of the film uh, th- that you saw? Well written. I would, I would never imagine a film that doesn't have, <laughs> like, a script where a lot of words being said for it to keep me interested, for me not to, you know, get bored and want to look at my phone like it from right from jump out the gate, you know, where, where the kid gets snatched up right away. I mean, it, it just 
grabs your attention and keeps you let you know this isn't the fucking game this is, this is real people are dying right away Absolutely. you don't even get to know them <laughs> yeah that's that's real that's oh my god well i mean I, to, to I, add oh go ahead go ahead um, I'm, ju- I'm just realizing that the entire cast the entire cast uh, it, our, our, our is this family a vibe and the movie starts out with what with the youngest of them dying yeah so it's it definitely sets the the, the stakes of this shit real high from jump yeah. so yeah no i i definitely see where you're coming from there um to add to add to that though um uh you were saying that uh you have to pay attention to this movie, and it's no joke. Um, almost every movie you listen, you watch, uh, you could just listen to. You could hear it. You could hear what's going on and, and understand what's happening. Yeah. You cannot do that here, and I think that's what this movie is really magnificent for: is that it's calling your attention by being absolutely silent, which is unheard of. And I know that's a lot of puns all at once, but <laughs> it's not intentional by any means. <laughs> oh, but no, think, God damn it. think about think about though: if you're watching TV. What grabs your attention the most? And in most people's situations, it's going to be the loud-ass commercial playing at super high volume compared to your TV show to sell you something. Yeah. This movie has no nothing like that. It's just a quiet, subtle affair the whole way through, and it does a good job keeping your attention just doing that. Well, I, like, so I, I definitely agree with you there, but I wouldn't argue that it's, uh, like, I, I wouldn't argue that it's by itself a uh, like a, in a a super like a, a big innovation. I mean, no, I'm I not saying that, that but I, 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 I think I'm the just... use of silence to build suspense in horror movies is definitely like a well regulated thing. But I think this is the first movie that really tries to capitalize on that, and it go like like when you walk into the movie and you know it's a horror film and you know it's centered around things that like react on like the barest sound it starts you from like the the first minute with an in this really deep immersive attention grabbing setting yeah Yeah, absolutely yeah yeah that's true um so let me get into the important accolades and and, uh, notes here for you and then we'll jump right into a synopsis man i'm gonna talk a lot for a little bit here (laughs) um okay Actually, Ryan, if you want to read the uh, few facts I've got here in the middle, I'll highlight that for you real quick. Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> okay. Um, here we go. Our terror time continues this week with a with a Quiet Place, uh, released earlier this year in 2018, directed and starring John Krasinski. You might remember him from The Office. Uh, oh, this Jim. film this film went on to make 332 million dollars, uh, which uh, was worldwide. And that's nearly 20 times more than what this film costs to make. Damn. I'm going to start putting that little statistic in all these horror movies because horror movies are cheap and effective when they are successful. Mm-hmm. Um, this uh, ended up being one of the biggest box office uh, and critical successes of this year. Along with John, the film's cast also includes his wife Emily Blunt, Melissa Simmons, Noah Jupe, Cade Woodward, and Leon Russum, as the man in the woods. Oh, that, that's that right. Man. Oh, man. It, was, it was six people. Damn, I forgot. You forgot about the one that just I screamed for five the minutes. I forgot about just fucking just gave up. Yeah, I forgot about it. Yeah. Uh, while it's still uh, not over yet, uh, because the, the award season has not really started for some uh, uh, academies and whatnot, uh, this film has been nominated for several awards, and it's already won two. Ironically, for best sound mixing and best sound editing That's right. uh, from the International Online Cinema Awards. I absolutely believe that because the, like like the the sound in this in this movie is phenomenal. Like there's there's a little bit of it, but whatever is there is is crisp, and the design for the monsters roar is oh, insane. Wow. Yes, yes, man. <laughs> Alright, so I've got a few fast facts for you guys here. Uh, first and foremost, as Aaron's already mentioned, uh, John Krasinski and Emily Blunt are married uh, in both this film and in real life. As of the film's release, they have two, da- they have two daughters. Uh, there are actually real family photos of John and Emily's and their children used in the film. Uh, another fun fact is that uh, John Krasinski has actually been on the record saying that this movie is actually kind of a love letter to his kids 
because of the portrayal and like what you would be willing to do as a parent to save your your kids wow uh, so it, like he actually used that as the basis for creating this movie which was one of the main things that really wanted me to see the movie personally uh now also uh fun fact as well doors are never opened or closed throughout the entirety of the film which in the setting makes a lot of sense because they have to be really really cognizant of sound and i love that they kept to that for the entirety of the movie and, and it's something you wouldn't notice without like l- paying attention for that either yeah i didn't notice you that. Right. Take for granted didn't it's, it's something that you definitely take for granted but it's also something that makes complete sense it makes complete sense yes. so i love it um let's see here a uh, fun fact that i didn't know um is that uh this movie was actually shot in 36 days which oh, wow. sounds insane. Wow. Like, that sounds nonsensical, like, nonsensically fast. Um, and the real fun fact that I didn't know and that I'm loving as I'm reading, John Krasinski actually played the monster in a motion capture suit for a couple of scenes in the film. This was a very low-budget movie. Very low This budget. dude, oh my god, they killed it. I, 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 I love it. I, I like... I, like I, this is John Krasinski's uh, directorial debut, isn't it? I or believe is it, is, so. I think it, I know it's definitely his first horror movie, but I, I'm pretty sure it's also his directorial debut. Which he may he may have directed an episode or two of The Office, but I mean for film wise, I think this might be his first. Yeah. Well, in any case, this was a triumph, and I can't wait to see what else he does. Absolutely, I think he knocked it out of the park here, and I mean he kept it under a tight budget. And look, look, it paid off so well. Like, 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 like the only film <laughs> under your belt makes twenty times the like gets a twenty time return on investment. Get the fuck out of here! That dude could make any movie he wants at yeah, this point. That's... Oh, Ryan, wait, wait till we get to Get Out. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that is that is a mind blowing thing. Wow. Um, so. So yeah, with that, I have a synopsis here for you boys. All right, let's let's get it. Let's get it. Here we go. Welcome to Dystopia or Dystopia Scenario Thirteen S One. When alien creatures arrive on Earth and they hunt us based on the noise we make, the world is now rendered silent as uh, those who have rema- uh, remained learn to stay quiet to survive. Our story follows Jim Halpert and his family, uh, whose names are really never mentioned in the film, but they're listed in the credits. So prepare for a little confusion. Uh, Jim is married to Evelyn, and they have two to three kids. Uh, we we have uh, one who dies in the first 15 minutes to establish the threat uh, and risk of the, uh, to the, uh, the children posed to their survival. There's a deaf girl who is a somewhat rebellious teenager that no one understands. Uh, and our third kid is a cowardly young boy who needs to grow up and uh, sort of does by the end of the film. Um, after an incident involving their youngest that we already mentioned, the Abbots, as the credits call them, uh, work to uh, make a replacement <laughs> child. <laughs> They prepare their dwelling with all the soundproofing and warning systems they can set up. Uh, while J- and all the while, Jim is studying these creatures and doing everything he can to fight against them, but he cannot come up with an answer on how to beat them. Eventually, he takes up uh, he takes his cowardly child out with him uh, on a gathering mission, hoping t- uh, to level him up in so in so that if he in the unlikely event he dies, you know uh, the cowardly child can become the man of the house. He's got a power uh, level, man. Got a power level that. Uh, while Jim and Scaredy Cat are away, the angsty deaf girl uh, storms off in a huff, a- uh, mad that Jim didn't take her when she's clearly more capable of helping him. Uh, she goes uh, to the grave of the boy who died at the beginning of the film uh, because she feels guilty for le- uh, letting it go down that way in the first place. Meanwhile, back on the ranch, uh, Evelyn uh, has uh, Evelyn's baby has decided now is the time to show up when everyone else is away. Uh, between this and stepping on a loose nail, Evelyn's having a hard time not making any noises at all, which allows us to uh, see the first major creature uh, up close and personal. Uh, the warning lights go on, and all she can do is avoid the creatures until someone is there to save her. Uh, Jim and Boy uh, return home uh, to see that Evelyn is in trouble. Boy goes to turn on the distraction protocol, lighting up the sky with some bitchin' fireworks. Uh, Jim grabs his shotgun and finds a bloody, a bloody Evelyn... Uh, with a newborn baby in her arms. He gets them both down into his padded bunker just in time to get them safe from another one of the creatures. Uh, when she's secured, Jim goes out to find Boy and Teen, 
uh, who have uh, found each other and a way to top the silly silo. Uh, Teen uh, believes Jim doesn't really love her because of the aforementioned guilt and she tries to leave. Boy, uh, I should really read this in, in the right way. Boy tells her to uh, uh, otherwise, uh, but falls into the silo because conflict has to happen. Uh, the two are trapped in the silo as another Echo Beast, that's what I'm going to call him now, uh, jumps in after them. Uh, this is when uh, Teen's uh, hearing aid starts to freak out. Uh, you see the Echo Beast's hypersonic hearing as a strange uh, feedback uh, issue. Uh, it has a fe- strange feedback issue while the Teen's hearing aid is on, causing it to lose its mind and run away by any means necessary. That includes running through the nearest wall. <laughs> uh, Jim finds the kids, and more Echo Beasts are on the way. They try to make it to the house, but uh, stop at a truck along the way. As Jim mulls over, getting a shovel or a gun or something, an Echo Beast lays him out. Boy! Makes a uh, noise in panic, causing the Echo Beast to come for him next. Jim realizes there's only one way out of this mess that he sort of caused for them. He screams, calling the Beast to him while his children very slowly get away. Uh, They return to Evelyn, and they are uh, cornered by another Echo Beast. Uh, Teen's hearing aid goes off once again for like the eighth time, and she finally uh, connects the dots. She slaps that bad boy against the microphone and plays that feedback over a loudspeaker. The Echo Beast armor crumbles and Evelyn shoots it good. More Echo Beasts rush towards the house as the film comes to an end. Evelyn cocks a gun and the credits roll. God damn. What a fucking movie. It really was a uh, really well written, well set up movie. It was, uh, it was, it was really beautiful. It has a lot of good moments in there, and I have a few things I'm going to totally undercut it with, but, um, <laughs> no, 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 I think that despite my, my minor nitpicks, which I'm going to have a few, of course, um, I love it. It's probably one of my favorite films of this year. It may not be number one, because it's in competing with Infinity War and Black Panther, but it's been a hell of a year, and this definitely takes the cake as some of the, what the one of the best ones out there. Man, you just gotta hate those kids. Those, those damn no. bastard kids. Oh. So I've heard a lot of criticism. Am I the, the only? Kids. Am I the only person who is okay with the kids, nah, man? It's <laughs> funny. I've heard a kids. lot of criticism about the kids. Kids are like, "Why we gotta be quiet? I don't like living this lifestyle." Like, go step outside and clap your hands. That's why. <laughs> step outside and clap. Well, the, so so boy, I'm gonna call him boy. It's just fun. Uh, so boy uh, actually seems very much like realistic. Like he is freaked out. Yeah. He also is knows how to be safe. But he's accident prone. I don't have anything against him. I think he, of all of them, is at least the most like sensible of them all. Yeah. The little kid, again, I can kind of understand it, but come on, guys. Why did you just pocket the battery so he couldn't take him? I mean, I, I, come on. I agree with that. Um, and then uh, <laughs> Deaf Girl, she's a teenager. It's hard for me to sympathize with that. <laughs> she's, she's a teenager. Like you were ever a she's a teenager, teenager in the world that's being destroyed. Like you were ever a teenager. Oh, I can't, can't sympathize with that shit. No, Ryan, I can sympathize. I can understand that I was a teenager. I couldn't sympathize with myself being a teenager. I hated myself as a teenager. I look back on it and I'm like, man, oh you made some stupid choices, boy. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, I honestly, like, I, the kids have flaws, but they, it makes them relatable. Like, ev- like all of the problems in the movie, they like, they they stem from just the humanity of these, like, like of of this this group of this family. And it's really, I, I think that's, I think the best conflict in movies come from just relatable people being stuck in horrible situations. So it's like the fact that they're human is what's kind of causing them to trip up. And I think that makes for the best conflict. And that was plenty rife within this movie too. So I think it makes the conflict a lot more relatable and realistic. Uh, oh, so you when weak, you see pathetic humans. <laughs> so, so, so when you see the girl being pissed that her dad doesn't really trust her or doesn't like want to, like, like doesn't want to take her out and like teach her how to do the shit you can see where she's coming from because she wants to be helpful and at the same time she's also shouldering guilt for getting her younger brother killed. Where you look at it from the dad's perspective and says, girl, you can't hear shit (laughs) and I need to fix that before I take you out here because you not being able to hear anything is really bad. You can see both of them. 
and the conflict that comes from that is it makes for a really good movie in my opinion yeah, there's a lot of those dad knows best films. Like, I think a good example is the Taken movies, where like the dad's like a pro like dad, and he's also like an expert in everything. <laughs> he is a pro dad. <laughs> no, well, well, and, and the thing is, it's fun, but there are so many movies nowadays that are doing that. And I was a little worried going into this one the first time I saw it, where I'm like, okay, is he going to be like over competent at, at, at everything? Where like there's no flaw with what he does, and he's just going to be like the badass like super marine dad where I just get bored of his character after the first, like, hour? Or is there going to be something about him that, you know, works? And they develop a good relationship between him and the other characters enough where he doesn't feel like that one-dimensional super dad. He feels like an actual, genuine, like, struggling to get his family to stay alive dad. I, I, I like what they did with it. He worked, so, he worked so hard to keep them protected, though. Like, so, he did so much extra work. Studying the monsters, setting stuff up always trying to take two steps ahead of them like he did so it was like his whole life was dedicated to keeping them safe and you Absolutely. could tell you like you could see you could see the toll that took on his character like he he was doing such amazing work in like the survival aspect but you could see he had to spend some time just by himself like kind of shuddering under the weight of all of that responsibility and it ought it, it distanced him from his kids it distanced him a bit from his wife and it made him a bit colder like and not able to really see what his kids were going through to the point where boy had to explain you understand <laughs> your daughter blames herself for the fact that that our brother died right you you get that you think you you do you understand that she thinks you don't love her because this is happening and he's like oh shit i didn't realize that oh god i've been so focused with trying to save you all from the fucking apocalypse that i missed that i'm yeah. sorry and it's really good to see that too uh, all right, so I have a few discussion questions here for you. We're going to roll through real quick. You guys ready? Yes. All right, number one, I've already done. So number two, where does the farmhouse get electricity from? <laughs> mm. Think about it. Mm. <laughs> because power plants probably aren't active anymore due to the whole end-of-the-world scenario. And wouldn't having a generator be so noisy that it would just cause the monsters to beat her all the time? So I'm trying to figure out where the hell that power is coming from. I think I got one of those wind turbines. Maybe. Far farms do get subsidies for that. I didn't see one, but they could have one somewhere that it wasn't shown on the screen. Or on, on the scene. The generator would be way too loud. Would... Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, my guess would be that they do have a generator, but they have it in a soundproofed area. Like, I would love like... to have seen that just for confirmation, but I, 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 could, I could believe that. Like I mean, I mean the fa the fact that they created an entire like underground bunker specifically for this baby was like oh, all right. Insane. Like I, I can I can I can see that because like like the instant that I saw she was pregnant after the time skip, I'm like, holy fuck, guys, how are you gonna do this? What? There's no way to pull this off. That baby is just gonna make noise <laughs> from every moment that it's awake. What are you doing here? I'm actually going to skip ahead of that question, then. Uh, why do you think having a baby is the wisest idea, and do you think it was even planned? Oh, absolutely I would not. Just imagine <laughs> how how weird sex is just completely quiet for four years. Yeah! Would just be the weirdest, oh, man. weirdest thing ever. Yeah! Like how? No noise at all, no nothing, just... That would be so weird. <laughs> Not to mention, you, yeah. Not to mention, you know, if everything else is hyper quiet, you know that boy has heard his parents having sex. You, you absolutely know that happened. That boy in, is scarred in, in a from quiet life. place. No one can hear you, fap. <laughs> oh my. That'll be a tagline for this episode. I swear. But no, um, okay. I, I, I don't think it was planned. Could I think be. it happened. I think it just happened. Yep. And yeah. in the midst of. Uh, in the, in the midst of them grieving for their child, um, which uh, like the time skip is like what three years? I think. I think so. They do it in days, so it's hard for me to keep track of that. But yeah, it was a couple. It, 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 it might have been like two or three years, but like so, like in the midst of that, it probably happened. There's no way to get an, a, an abortion in this play, in this day and age. Um, oh right, you're, you're not also, trying hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop, stop. <laughs> I will hear nothing of your anger. Stop it. 
Um, but a, a, no, good, a good staircase is all you need. Stop. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> but I think I I think the the decision to really try and make it work was made partially out of the grief. Uh, for for them losing their for them for them losing their youngest. Yeah, I can see that. So yeah. like we 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 joke that it's a replacement baby, but it kind of is. Like, I, I think it kind of <laughs> was a little bit. Just a little. Oh, who bit. was joking? I thought that was the case altogether. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit. We need three to make the set. So come on, let's get it. <laughs> Three to make the set. Hey, honey, you know you've been practicing for a while, right? Let's just uh, let's hop at it again. We need three to make the set. Come on. Uh, let's see. Next one I got here for you. Uh, how does the military not find out about the aliens' weakness when they were able to discern that uh, their insane hearing ability in the first place? The military's a joke. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'll accept that answer. I'll accept that answer. Yeah. Uh, they probably they probably thought bullets and missiles could work, and when they finally didn't work, they were just like, "Fuck it, we tried." Like, I mean, let's be real here. This probably happened during the Trump era, so <laughs> it makes sense. Give up hope. I could, I could believe it. Uh, let's see here. What do I got next here? Uh, bu- 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 bu. Why don't they live by the river or other locations where they can mask their sounds? At least go there when Evelyn's like near her due date. For Christ's sake. <laughs> Um, I would argue that the barn that they have, they either had it, like it was either theirs, like from Go, or they found it, um, in their travels, and like there, like it was the first, like really defensible place that they could make a home, and there might just not have been a defensible place near the river, aside from one that they would have to like build by hand. So, unless we expect Jim Krasinski to actually just go ahead and one man build a house real fast by the river that has everything, I think them settling up in a barn that already just about had everything is acceptable. That makes sense. That makes yeah, a lot yeah, of sense. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I'm trying to poke all these holes, and Ryan's just like deflecting all of them. I like it. <laughs> so, what do I got next? What do I got next? Uh, let's see. Wouldn't uh, people in a large city actually be safe thanks to all the noise pollution that occurs? To wipe you out well, one by one. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I would think that, like, the people in cities, like, it's not I, necessarily. I see the argument both ways, so I was curious where you guys are on this one. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't think like I don't think it's that it's an ab- it's an overabundance of sound that makes them like like that 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 weakens them, but. If there were a bunch of people making noise in one place, that would just be a bunch of people they can eat. That, yeah. that when they would just just go through that one by one by one by one. Well, so, I think the argument yeah. was more in favor of the fact that you could use the various noises of the city you know, and all that to mask yourself more. Like, sure, big groups would be hard to hide in, but individuals could very easily make a city work for them for a good while. And I think- well, I mean, once I mean once power. Like once power runs out and like the majority of people are dead, like that's the majority of the noise pollution in the city. It's other people. So as as society and the city itself breaks down, there's not that much sound to hide in. I think I think there's a lot of monsters that went to the cities because I mean in their little area they had like what three different ones, yeah, three separate ones, and that was a very small area to have three separate monsters just patrolling. All fucking days. So I think in a, in a city, I mean, it's probably just ridiculous amounts of them. Where throughout throughout the <coughs> occurrence of this, they'll they'll wipe out the people, and there'll be less and less noise. And now you're stuck in this 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 big city with doors and everything, trying to get by. Yeah, I like I gotcha. that. I got gotcha. you. Uh, let's see what do I got next here. Uh, bu- 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 bu. Okay, here's one that I thought about during watching the film, and I want to know what you guys think. This is a callback to what I said earlier about sipping on a twig. Uh, how does one survive when humans make so many involuntary sounds? Sneezing, burping, coughing, farting, screaming, your night uh, nightmares. Uh, it, that's all part of your daily life. How, how does one survive with all that stuff you involuntarily do? I think the cool part about this movie with the monsters where it wasn't like they were listening at all times, because I believe they dropped like a lantern or a lamp or something, and nothing happened, so it's like only when they're in your area. So you know they they were able to live their not normal life, but as 
clothes to normally play games and stuff like that and make little noise because the monsters weren't there. Um, which I thought was amazing that they kind of kept that separate where it wasn't like, you know, they're just listening all day long. It's like, you know, they're just going around looking for food um, and killing. But I I think you would be able to make it as long as the monster's not right there on you. You know, of course, you know, sneezing and, and farting and, and screaming would happen. I mean, and if you scream at the wrong time, it's over. But I feel like I feel like more times and less they wouldn't be right there um, if you made little noises. That's fair. That's fair. Um, what was, let's see. What was, what was it? I, I feel like Sneezy would definitely kill some people for sure. Yes, um, definitely. I, I, Ryan, you don't know my dad, but Troy, you've met him. Yeah. Uh, he's got a. My dad's got a very unique uh, quirk where he will sneeze not once, not twice, not even three times. He will sneeze sometimes four or five times in a row without stopping. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I love my old man, but I think he's as good as dead. <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't. He would. He wouldn't make it too far in this. Yeah, he 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 gone. He gone. Man. He gone. Like, I've seen him try. He can never get it below, like, three. It's ridiculous. <laughs> That's funny. Your dad's amazing. That's funny. <laughs> uh, let's see what I got next. Uh, okay. Here's a, here's, a, here's a very interesting one. Do you guys believe Jim really needed to die in the end? Uh, were there no other solutions more viable where, any, where everyone could have survived? Um, I think at the moment instance, I don't think he could have really developed a plan like he was panicking. And I, I, mean, I think if he'd had more time, he might have thought something else. But in that moment where it was either do this or it's over for the kids, for the badass kids, I think I think, I think there was more options available if he had more time. But in the little time he had, I think that was the only thing he he really could do. Yeah, I would I would agree. I think I think it was primarily the time aspect. Like the, the fucking monster was on the yes. truck. It was yeah. on the truck, <laughs> and it was like, all right, you have three seconds. What are you gonna do? And it's just like, well, do I try and think up a clever plan, or do I do the one thing that I know is gonna make my kids safe? And like, like, I really love the fact that he took those, like, three seconds to reassure his daughter before he knew he was never going to see her again. It's just like, I, I, I love you. I have always loved you. Like, never doubt that, ever. And then he died. So I don't, I don't, I think that was the perfect, I think that was the perfect way to, for him to go out. Yeah. It is a powerful scene with that question. Um, I, I was thinking more personally for the par- stuff just before that, though, when they're on the run back to the farmhouse. So I know he stops at one point to like look at a weapon or to grab a weapon, and that's when he gets got. Yeah. Um, and I'm thinking to myself, you didn't really need to stop though. There was no one. There was nothing right on you at that moment. You guys probably could have gotten a little further without having to worry about running into something. I don't like now. I I haven't seen it. I uh, I, I didn't just watch it. I watched it a couple weeks ago. But from my recollection, I don't think he knew there was a monster nearby. When no, 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 I, I get that much. So it's just but... like, like, okay, we're, I think we're safe, I think we're safe, there's nobody around us, just in case some shit pops off, I want to have this weapon so that I can do, oh shit, there it is, <laughs> damn. So I, 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 I don't blame him for that, like, he was trying to think ahead, <clears throat> rather than just run, 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 he was trying to, like, like, he was trying to think ahead, and I won't fault him for that. And shit, it was just the luck of the draw, man. The thing was just right the fuck there. Oh, no, no, I'm not faulting him on that one. I, I just think personally that if, my, if I were in his shoes, my thinking would not be stop and grab a weapon. My thinking would be, okay, there's nothing here. We're already ahead. Let's just get to safety, and we'll recoup our, we'll, we'll regather uh, weapons and resources when we know for sure we're safe. I don't know. I, 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 could, I could see the decision. I, I, I could see myself making that decision if... If I was running with my kids and we we were a ways away from the farmhouse, but immediately it looked like I was like we were safe, I could spare three seconds to see if I can get a weapon. Like if they were like ten feet from the from the house and he said, you know what, let me grab a weapon, that would have been stupid. That would have been dumb. That would have been like, no, get your ass in the house, and then we'll deal with that. But where they were at that point in time, it made sense for me. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, I, I feel like maybe it's just I have a more I, I have a more defensive mindset in mind, and that seems like a more aggressive mindset, and yeah. thus I just I question it. But that's just me. The so. best defense is a good offense, Aaron. Come on, <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. All right. Uh, this one I think you guys are gonna like. 
So, what do you guys think of horror or thriller movies <clears throat> uh, like this or Don't Breathe that target the audience on a more personal level by showing the fear of losing sight or hearing against a threat? Sorry, what, 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 you, what you got on this one? I, I think that it's a, a different take than what you're normally... Like, when I was growing up watching horror films, and even through now, you know, I'm used to the, you know, there's one there's one villain um, who's chasing someone around throughout the movie. You know, oh, there goes Michael, you know, run through here. Or, you know, don't fall asleep because Freddy Krueger going to get you. You know, where these are, are a little bit different, where it's, you know, don't make a noise, which is something you take for granted because, you know, you make a noise opening and closing doors, walking, putting cups down, and things like that where you're like, dang, could I actually make it? Like, like... I can, like, in the Freddy movies, you'd be like, I can make it. I just outrun them. Like, I'm not worried about that. But in these movies, like, can I actually be quiet for my whole life? Like, could I actually live for five years without being able to make a, a real noise and, and survive? I think it's a, it's a not a fresh take because people do it a lot, um, but it's a more of a fresher take than your regular horror genre movies, if that makes well, sense. Well, and it puts people in the, the seat of someone who's disabled, who lives with that all the time, as, as it is. Yes. And it's a very interesting spin on the idea, for sure. Yes. I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, definitely, definitely enjoyed it, being this type of thriller. I, I consider more of a thriller than a horror, even though those, those aliens were just so, so creepy and weird. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ryan, what do you think? Um, I personally like this more than normal, like, horror or, like, genre films of this nature, uh, because I think that by taking away something so essential to, like, most people's daily life, I think it automatically creates a, an intense feeling of immersion. Like, where you're sitting there like, well... How would you be like like what would you do if you had to be cognizant of literally every sound you made for fear of your life like automatically you're more attentive to what you're doing just in your seat and to what the movie itself is doing I think it uh I think it speaks to a deeper more realistic sense of like terror uh, that makes for a more immersive viewing experience. So I like these movies fuck me up most, uh, and I think that's the reason why. And I like it. I, I really enjoy it. Absolutely. Um, and, and I mentioned it in the question, but I highly recommend if you like this movie, based on the loss of sound for the most part throughout the film, like the the, the gimmick being the loss of sound. Uh, check out Don't Breathe because. There's, it, it's a movie that kind of focuses more on the sight aspect. Namely, there's a scene in the movie where they're being chased by a blind guy who's trying to kill them, and he turns off the lights where he has the advantage. Oh, yeah. And it's fucking terrifying. Yeah, that girl, he had that girl in the basement just... That was an insane movie. I loved it. it, it it's very underrated. That I think everyone should check it out. It's crazy. It's good. Um... Last question before we move on to our next segment. Do you guys want or expect sequels? Assuming we get them, because, I mean, look how much fucking money this movie made. What kind of sequel would you want to see? I think this is like how I feel about Get Out. I don't really want a sequel. I kind of like it being just a one thing. I mean, I feel like it's a sequel. I'm going to have expectations. I'm, I'm going to want certain things. I'm, I'm still going to want to be a fresh take. And a sequel, I just don't feel like it's going to honor... What, what was done for this one i feel like just one being like this will be fine um and then move on to something different yeah i i i, I agree i really don't want a sequel for this um like what the things that make a good sequel for me are a really really interesting world that you can explore more of um, and a and an overarching story that needs to be completed. I feel like in the in a quiet place, the like the concept of the monster was really cool. Yes, it was really cool, and they explored that even to its inevitable conclusion of you figure out what the monster's actual weakness is, which is really cool. Um, but I feel like the center, the focal point of the movie is this 
family's relation with each other. And I think that was explored enough and to the point where they're all good except for Jim because, you know, he's dead. But, <laughs> um, but you know, like... He's dead, Jim. <laughs> as, 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 he's dead, Jim. Uh, but as a family, they're strong. They figured out the way that they figured out the way to kill the monsters. The mom is gonna fucking hunt them and just like be done with it, so that they don't have to really worry about it anymore. And it's gonna be all it's like the rest of the rest of that family story is like a bygone conclusion. Like I don't need more of that. I I, I think it's perfectly fine to just let it rest where it is. What's interesting is you guys bring it up a little bit, but um, I was listening to a podcast earlier today, in fact, or maybe yesterday, where uh, they talked about the idea of uh, horror movie icons and stuff like that, where they start off as a they all represent something at some point. Uh, I think it was a hereditary podcast I was listening to, but they were using Michael Myers as an example, where he actually represented something when he first was like put on the scene as a as a as a killer, and um, they. Uh, it was minimal blood, uh, cheap effects, everything. But it was very budget, very well, and, and it had very good ideas behind it. But, if you know anything about the Michael Myers uh, Halloween franchise, uh, you know that very quickly that starts to lose some of the uh, meaning and appeal behind it because they start making him more ruthless, they start just kind of cheapening the entire affair, they throw a bigger budget the pro- at every future installment that comes out to try to make bigger kills, bigger actors, all that stuff. And the meaning behind the first film is kind of lost because it focuses more on the iconography than the actual substance of the first film. So, I could see why a sequel to this would not be very good, because you could easily see it just being, oh, more of the monsters, because that's what sold the first movie. Mm. When it isn't. Um, That being said, I would not be opposed to more if they left this family completely and focus on different aspects and how this affects the rest of the world. Oh. Because that could be interesting. But I don't expect it to happen because that's not how big Hollywood movies work. So Yeah, I mean it could it could be, but honestly I don't I don't need it. I, I, I honestly don't need it. I mean you took like they, they did they did so many interesting things in this movie, like the concept of hey, you can't make any noise of Hey, you can't make any noise, but this lady's pregnant and is about to have a baby. Oh shit! Um, you have a family with two young children. Oh shit! What do you do with that? Um, you have a girl like what, the, the oldest girl is deaf. What the fuck do you do with that? Oh shit! Okay. I feel like they had so many interesting hooks in this scenario that they, that they don't need anymore. Like it was, it was great. You don't like I don't I don't know of anything else. Anything interesting you can hook onto this setting to make me want another movie of it, and well, well, without and without that, yeah, I, I, all I would be doing is just comparing it to the original. A fun fact for you, Ryan: Did you know that the that they were actually approached during the production of this film to tie it into the Cloverfield franchise? Oh wow! <sighs> it didn't happen, but they were approached for it, and that would have been interesting, not good. But interesting. That might have been interesting. Yeah, no, that, that, that might have been interesting. <laughs> yeah, that would have put a different spin on it. Absolutely. Um, so that's all I got for tr- uh, discussion questions. Is there anything else you guys wanted to add to it, or should we move on to our trivia segment this week? Oh boy. Boy. Uh, no, I think discussed it all. All righty. Uh, so if you guys are still in the Google Doc, I would ask you guys to scroll to the top, because I don't want you to, to see the answers here. Uh, so, what we have this week uh, is another one of those fun uh, trivia games where I give you guys a year, and you've got to guess the highest grossing horror film of that year. Oh boy. Fun. Uh, Ryan, I, Ryan, did you win, or was it Nicole that won last time? It was absolutely Nicole who won. Okay. Well, no, it, it was tough. I think it was like a two-to-one win, so it was a low-scoring game. Yeah, so I was I was one I was one year off the last question. It made me so sad. But uh, here we go. So, 2009. What is the highest-grossing film of 2009? What came out 2009? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to bring up Box Office Mojo, and I'll give you some context real quick. 2009. Uh, well, we were both uh, just out of high school? Oh, yeah, we were. 
So with that grand view. Uh, let's see. Best box office yearly, 2009. Okay, so for context, the top three movies of the year that are not including this one, Avatar, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, and Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Oh my goodness. Um, <coughs> um, I have a couple hints I could drop for you if you guys really need them. Drop one I hint. I will never yes. turn down a hint. Drop one hint, All please. right. Uh, the total of grossing for the first for for this movie is uh one hundred seven million eight hundred fifty eight hundred fifty nine thousand. I know it's not a lot uh, uh, of a clue, but uh, here's another clue for you. Uh, this franchise took the number one spot in two thousand ten, two thousand eleven, and in two thousand twelve. Mm, two thousand nine. This might be too big a hint, but we'll see how this goes. Uh, I'm gonna guess Saw. Saw's a very good guess. Uh, Troy, what do you want to throw in the mix here? Uh, I don't have a single guess. Wow. I want to say Don of the. No, that came out way before 2009. The Dead series. Yeah, I don't. I don't have one. I don't have. All a right. Guess. Uh, the answer may shock you. Is the Paranormal Activity franchise? Oh, what the that fuck? came out two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. Wow. And they got the top spot of horror movies four years running. Wow. God damn. Okay. Impressive, no? That was very impressive. Oh shit. Oh, dear. Um, let me just double check my source here to make sure, but I do believe. Yep. Okay. So next one. Nineteen ninety six. So that was a fresh six years old. <laughs> And for context, let's give you guys your top three. Independence Day, Twister, and the first Mission Impossible. Oh my god, the first Mission Impossible. Is, um, it's um... Tom that, Cruise as a babby. Oh um, shit. What was that one movie called? <sighs> Had Morgan Freeman. I think came out that same time. Seven? Is that it? Uh, I think yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, so that's your guess, Ryan. What do you have? Fuck. Ooh, seven's a really good guess too. Oh, God damn it. Um. Shit. Nineteen ninety-six. Uh. Come on, come on, come on. Mission Impossible. I'll give you a quick hint, Ryan. It is number 13 on the top grossing movies of that year. I know that's not very helpful, but it's a clue. <laughs> uh, God, I am horrible at this game. Um, hey, you're in the lead. You're not doing that horrible. <laughs> oh, wait, no, you didn't get the last one. No, you're, you're, I didn't get the last one. He's not losing, no, though. He's not losing, though. Ah, uh, no one's losing, really. Can you give one more hint? <laughs> Uh, man, I'm trying to think of what else I can give you here. Um, it made $103 million in the box office, which isn't super helpful. Um, <laughs> it is the first in a franchise that, I don't believe it's still going right now, but I know they did had a, had a installment not l too long ago. Um, it's not something like... Um, um, installment <laughs> movies, let's think. Oh well, that that took that took out my guess. I was gonna. <laughs> yeah, seven seven's dead. Seven is. Um, installment <laughs> movie that came out when I was a kid. Uh, not scary movie. Scream. I got Scream. Ryan. Is Scream. Scream was one of those stupid movies or the scary movie. I'm going I scream. think I, I think Scream came out like like near ninety nine. I'd say. Um, but I'm gonna go with. Oh, fuck me. I'm gonna go with. Fuck! It's entirely wrong. It's, it's not. It's not. Here's here's the thing. My my, my like most of my experience with horror movies are all like from the eighties. Like oh, that's gonna be our next next gonna be our next decade. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, the eighties. Wow. <laughs> oh man. Fuck me. Um. Shit. I'm just gonna. 
was six years old when the fuck came out. I don't remember. I was six years old. I agree. Um, <laughs> this is entirely wrong, but I'm gonna guess one of the Child's Play movies. And the point goes to Troy. It is Scream. Nice. <sighs> I just remember the mask when I was Nicely a kid. Nicely done. That's all I remember is the good. mask. Very good. Okay, next one here, because uh, you're not out of the words yet. We can see if Ryan can catch up with you. He might. Uh, I'm definitely going to n- 1980. 1980. Friday the 13th. Okay, Friday the 13th in one corner. What do you got over there, Troy? I feel like there were so many movies that came out there and then. There were, man. The um, 80s were like the, the 80s were like quintessential horror movie time. Is um what's that old dude's name? Um hey Johnny. I mean, a lot of old dudes. Um Um You talking about the Jack Nicholson movie? Yes. Yes. Um <laughs> What's that one old dude, Jack um, Nicholson? Yeah, that one. <laughs> Uh, the sh- Shining, The Shining, that's it. The Shining. Uh, the final answer? Yes, that that that's it. All right, the winner of this round. All right, I have one more to guess. So the the the, the point for this one goes to Troy as well. Damn, Troy, sh- you are killing it. The Shining's a popular movie. I've watched that a few times. I you love The Shining. Uh, for it. record-keeping purposes, uh, The Shining made forty-four million. Forty-four. Friday the Thirteenth, thirty-nine million. It was a very close call. Oh, are you wow. kidding? Wow! Wow! He was close. Wow! <laughs> oh, wow! We're gonna, we're gonna jump forward one year to nineteen seventy-nine. What is the oh, top-grossing horror movie of nineteen seventy-nine? Oh, I, I don't even know what movies. Oh my, oh my goodness. I'm going to try to look it up real quick because this site only goes back to 1980, so give me one moment here. 1979. 79. Is that when Alien came out? <coughs> uh, give me a know. moment. I'm going to go with that. That's a horror movie. Uh, I feel like that's a 7. Oh, no, that's an 80s movie. Um, Alien? I don't know, Ryan, sh- sh- am I allowed to tell him what movies did come out that year if he asks? I think so. Okay. Uh, Alien did indeed come out that year. I'm gonna I'm go with Alien. I'm going with Alien. I'm gonna go with Alien. Oh, all right. Uh, Ryan, what do you got to top that? You said seventy nine. Indeed. Uh, Man, Kramer versus Kramer, Rocky Two, Star Trek: The Motion Picture, Moonraker came out this year. I'm gonna go with <coughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Ooh, I thought that was eighties. Well, I I, uh, I, I, I I think the I think the first one came out in the late seventies. I think. Well, okay, I'm really so good you're at this game. <laughs> let me tell you, neither of you got it, but Troy is a, it got the higher ranking of the two of the ones you picked. Oh, uh, was that alien? The highest grossing movie of 1979, and you're going to kick yourself, Ryan, for not guessing this, Amityville Horror. Wow. Really? Yep. Amityville made $86,432,000, Alien at eighty million nine hundred and thirty-one. Damn, Alien. Nicely done. So, Troy is our second winner for the top grossing box office movies uh, for horror movies. Good work, man. Oh, Congratulations, sir. Those were some hard lists. Those were some hard lists. I don't make these easy, and this is, uh, this is honestly a lot of fun to mess around with. It, it, here, here's the thing. I've seen a fair amount of movies, but I don't keep track of what year they came out. So, I am just bad at this game. I definitely thought he was going to do something recent. Like, I was about to say, cause I know IT just, it just broke a record. I thought he was going uh, to throw that out If I did that, that would be too easy. I was like, I thought, thought maybe he was going to throw that out I was like, oh, that's going to be an easy point for me. And he came up with some other stuff. And I'm like, man. <laughs> now, I can't make it that easy. Otherwise, then there'd be no challenge. There'd be no challenge. That was the challenge. I do agree. Um, so before we get to our final section where we rank the movie, again, a reminder for everybody to go to our Patreon page, as well as uh, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and our email if you want to contact us, tell us your favorite horror movies, or want to talk to us about any kind of movies in our upcoming schedule. Ryan, what is that email? That is e that is <coughs> fucking Ryan can't 
guest trivia for shit at gmail dot I mean that is evacstation at gmail dot com. That sounds like it might be it. Uh, so guys, let's go ahead and rank the movie. Now, Ryan, we did uh, a unique little one for last week when Nicole was on. Do we want to keep that going for the horror movies, or do we want to do our usual classics bit? Yeah, no, I, 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 I think I, I like the. I like the the simplistic fun uh, one that we came up with the last time. All right, so I'll, I'll, we'll expect to Troy then, because I don't know if he's he hasn't, he hasn't seen that episode yet; it hasn't come out. Uh, so Troy, uh, we have a new ranking system specifically for the horror movies called Bucket or Fuck It. <laughs> bucket or Fuck It. Okay. Uh, namely, either we put it in the good blood covered bucket uh, for all of our good horror movies, or we fuck it and get it out of here, get rid of that movie. Uh, I assume we're all on the same page with this one. Uh, this is definitely going to be a bucket for me. Yeah, a bucket for me. It's... Nah, I say fuck it. No, I'm just joking. No, this is a fantastic <laughs> movie, so it's definitely going in the blood bucket. Yep, in that blood bucket it goes. All sloshy and covered in giblets. Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely recommend this movie. If you guys have not seen it yet, be sure to check it out. Um, it is available on DVD uh, right now if you want to rent it. Uh, you could, I think you can stream it on a couple of different platforms. I don't think it's on Netflix yet, but give it another, like, what, two, three months, you think? Yeah. Something yeah. about that. That sounds about right. Yeah. Um, it's not a Disney movie, so clearly it's not going to be stuck on the Disney platform yet, so we're good there. Um, so, yeah, that's all for this episode of the uh, tr- uh, Terror Time. Thank you for joining us, and next time you hear us, you'll be listening to, and I keep closing the schedule page for no goddamn reason. Uh... <laughs> Next out should be Get Out. Oh what? shit! We got a guess for that one too. Actually, he's all, he's all ready to go for that one. I love it. Uh, so we'll see you after credits.